If you've been watching the recent implosion of the cryptocurrency market, you might have heard people mention getting liquidated or sold out on decentralized finance and cryptocurrency platforms. But what even is a liquidation? Why do liquidations happen? Why are they essential to the cryptocurrency ecosystem? And how can you prevent yourself from getting liquidated? That's the subject of today's video. Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the Part-Time Economist and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at liquidations and over collateralized loans within cryptocurrency and decentralized finance. Now obviously we're talking about lending, borrowing. I want to make it clear that this is not a financial advice video. Rather I'm trying to explain how a key concept of cryptocurrency works and where it's different than the traditional financial system. So with that being said, what even is a liquidation? Liquidation is a process that incentivizes the repayment of borrowed amount to maintain stability of a lending protocol. Um, and before we even get into that, I think it's important to just start at the very basics because everything we're going to be talking about today comes back to loans and some of the difficulties making loans in a decentralized way. So you might need a loan for whatever. You need to buy a car, groceries, food, gas, a house, whatever the case, you need a loan. In the traditional financial world, you'll go to a bank or lending institution and they will assess your credit worthiness. So they're holding their users' funds and they say, hey, we want to get these funds back for our users. How certain are we that you, part-time economist, are going to pay us back? And they might look at my income, my assets, my credit history, a variety of things to assess whether or not I'm likely to pay back the money. And then they will decide if they're going to lend to me and what my interest rate will be. But we don't really have that in cryptocurrency because there's no part-time economist trying to get a loan. Rather, all a cryptocurrency decentralized finance protocol will see is a string of characters. So to Charlie Echo Hotel, Charlie Alpha 387 wants a loan of $1,000. Well, just based off that, there's no telling how credit worthy that borrower is going to be. So that puts us at a little bit of a conundrum. We need to be able to issue loans because that is a fundamental part of finance. But at the same time, we don't have any way of assessing credit risk. So what do we do? Well, what we do is we require the borrower to put up a certain amount of collateral. Now, if they're trying to take out a $10 loan, how much collateral will they be required to put up? Do you think $10? Nope. Because if we match collateral, they put up $10, they take out a loan for $10. Well, as soon as they get that very first penny of interest, we have no guarantee that they'll be able to pay back the full amount. So what we do is we require them to put up an excess of collateral. So if they want to take out a $10 loan, we might require them to put up $15 or $20 worth of collateral. And you're probably saying, what on earth? This doesn't make any sense. Why would I put up $20 of collateral to take out a $10 loan? Why don't I just sell $10 worth of my crypto? And when I first started in cryptocurrency, I thought the exact same way. It didn't make sense to me. But in reality, there's a number of reasons why someone might want to borrow from themselves instead of just selling their asset. Number one, when you borrow against assets that you own, you keep those assets. So if you sell your Bitcoin when it's $20,000 and then Bitcoin goes up to $100,000, well, you have sold that Bitcoin. By contrast, if you deposit Bitcoin as collateral, you take out a loan with 2% interest. When you pay back that loan, you get all your Bitcoin back. So you have kept control of that asset that you own. Not only that, but I'm not a tax advisor, but there can be certain tax advantages to taking out a loan versus selling. Let's suppose you bought Bitcoin when it was $100. It's now $100,000. If you sell Bitcoin, you're going to have a massive, massive tax bill on that. On the flip side, if you take a a loan against yourself, you're not selling. So um, generally, there's not going to be tax associated with that. Again, check with your tax professional first. I'm just going off the generalities here based on where I live. So with that being said, let's suppose that we do want to take out a 
over collateralized loan for whatever reason. There's many different protocols that will allow us to do this. One of them is compound finance, not endorsing it, not disendorsing it. It's just one that has a lot of information. So on the left hand side, you'll see supply. The right hand side is borrow. So remember, if we want to take out a loan, we need to put up collateral. So the first thing we do is we deposit collateral. And you can see here we deposit Aave, basic attention token, compound governance token. Most cryptocurrency lending protocols will allow you to deposit tons of different cryptos, right? And each cryptocurrency, this is really interesting, will have a different collateral factor. We'll get into that later, uh, but just keep in mind you can use various cryptocurrency as collateral. And for doing that, you earn an interest rate, right? So even if I don't need a loan, I can still lend out my basic attention token, my Aave token, whatever the case may be. But if I want to take out a loan, we need to look at the right hand side of the screen where we can see the interest rates for taking out a loan. Now, once we've deposited our collateral, we are given a certain borrowing limit because remember, we have to over collateralize our position. So if we supply $50 worth of DAI, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, DAI is a stable coin valued at approximately $1. So for that $50 deposit, we can only borrow $37 and 42 cents. And this is where collateral factor comes into play. Certain cryptocurrencies uh, will have a higher or lower collateral factor. And this just reflects the going market rate. Um, some cryptocurrencies, it's, it's just a function of how it works. Some cryptocurrencies, they will allow you to borrow more against it. Some cryptocurrencies, you can borrow less against it, right? So DAI, I can borrow here $37.42. Maybe if I deposited $50 worth of basic attention token, I could only borrow $30, right? So that's something to keep in mind. Now, we've went through the steps. We've deposited our collateral. We've taken out our loan. What starts happening from here? Well, what this cryptocurrency protocol wants to do is it wants to keep everything in balance. So it always makes sure that we can repay our loan and our interest. So when we start taking out our loan, we immediately begin accruing interest on that loan. And again, let's go back to the example of we have our $50 worth of DAI and we can borrow $37.42. If we take out a $36 loan, we are fine. But let's suppose the interest keeps building up and now we get to where we're borrowing $40. Well, our limit here is only $37.42. So we can see that as our interest rate goes up or as the price of our collateral falls, we get that ratio out of whack. And the DeFi protocol does not like this because remember, we're operating under the kind of code is law, mathematical certainty assumptions. So we don't want to have to hope that someone pays us back. We want to guarantee we can get our funds. So again, let's suppose we've got a $90 loan with $150 of collateral. The max we can borrow is $100. Or so if the loan value goes above $100, right? Because the max we can borrow is $100 or the collateral falls below 135, that triggers liquidation. So once we pass that threshold, either because our interest accrued or if the value of our collateral fell, right? So if we had $150 of collateral, we could borrow $100. But with $135 worth of collateral, we can only uh, borrow a certain amount less than that, right? So as our collateral falls, we our borrowing limit falls as well. So the DeFi protocol begins liquidating and selling us out of our collateral. But here's the interesting thing. It doesn't sell it at the market price. It sells it at a discount to incentivize people to come in, pay back our loan for us, and get a little bit of a profit. Because if there was no profit, well, then they wouldn't pay back the loan. They would have no reason to. So what happens is when we borrow more than we're allowed to, and there's a risk of us not being able to pay it back, people will come in, they will pay off our loan for us, and they get a portion of our collateral. So um, depending on how you look at this, there is a profit motive for the people that are assuming those loans, the liquidators, if you want to call them that, or on the flip side, it's a penalty for the person that wasn't able to pay that back. So 
In summary, liquidation is a way of repaying funds that are borrowed on DeFi protocols. What it does is it's a way that if our over collateralized loan, if we start getting too close to where it looks like we might not be able to pay it back. Remember, we want stability in cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency was created as kind of a pushback against um, the 2008-2009 financial crisis, right? So we don't want to risk that. We want to over collateralize so we know we're going to get our money back. And when we start getting close to where it looks like someone's not going to be able to pay back their loans, we are going to go in we're going to repay their loans for them. That makes sure that the lenders, they get paid. And as a service for doing that, we're going to get some of that collateral plus a premium, right? So there's an incentive. There's incentives all around. There's an incentive for the borrower to make sure that they don't get liquidated, right? So if they see that their interest rate is going up, they should pay back their loan. If the value of their collateral is falling, right? So we had $150 of collateral, we could take out a $100 loan. Well, our collateral starts going down because the price of the cryptocurrency is going down, we can put in more collateral. So there's an incentive all around, an incentive for the borrower to keep an eye on their positions, make sure they're paying their interest. There's also an incentive for these liquidators that come in and make sure that the system stays um, on an even keel. Now, with that being said, there can be downsides to these liquidations as well, because essentially what we're doing if we're getting collateral and we're immediately turning around and selling it, that can put downward pressure on the asset being used as collateral, which is something really interesting that happened recently. Might make another video about it, but at least for now, I know the video is getting quite long. So I would like to thank you for stopping by. I hope you found the video educational and informative, and I will see you in the next one.